The first fight in the main card is going to be a featherweight bout between Daniel Weichel from Germany and Pedro Cavallo from Portugal. Now, even though Pedro Cavallo is from Portugal, he's actually based out of Dublin, Ireland. So he's the hometown kid and he's training out of SBG Ireland, of course, like all these fighters are. So Carvalho, who's 11-5-0 and and overall, he's 3-2 in his last five fights. He's currently a dog here at plus 190, um, 26 years old, so very young. 5 foot 11 in height with 70 and a half inch reach. Now, on the other side, Daniel Weichel, who goes by, quote, Drake. That's funny. I wonder if he likes Drake's music. <laughs> Probably not. He's German. <laughs> anyway, he's 41, 12, and 0. 53 total fights in his career. That's amazing. He's 2 and 3, though, in his last five fights. Now, currently in the money line, he's minus 235. He hails specifically from Frankfurt, Germany. 36 years old in 11 months. So he'll be 37 years old soon. So clearly a full 10 year uh, age, I don't know, disadvantage here for Weichel compared to 26 year old Carvalho. Now, Weichel's 5'10 in height, so about the same height, and 70-inch reach, so about the same reach. He's coming out of MMA spirit. Now, according to the Tapology public vote here, looks like Weichel is getting 85% of the votes compared to 15% only coming in for Carvalho. I don't agree. Um, I don't agree. I think this is going to be a dog or pass for me. Let's talk about it, okay? I have to have a good reason uh, to want to bet on a fighter who's about to be 37 years old here. Okay, here's a guy who's, who's aging, okay? He's two and three in his last five fights. Um, if you look at some of those fights, and we'll provide the links there for you in, in, in the description, look at that Sanchez fight. That was this year. Okay, it was a five round fight. He lost via decision, but he really lost the fight. On the judges' scorecards, I believe it was 4 1. For every judge, maybe one judge had 3 2. He just can't deal with the forward pressure and pace. Um, he's unable to adjust. You know, some guys, when you pressure them, they'll just ball up. Uh, not a great technique here, okay? So what I'm seeing from Daniel Weichel is that if you put pressure and pace on him, he gets uncomfortable, he balls up, and I'm not saying he gives up, but he becomes very um, susceptible to more damage. And he's not responding with punches. He's not responding with takedowns. He's just sort of absorbing them, okay? More so on Daniel Weichel. I just want to make sure I'm clear on some things here with him because I think the guy, look, 53 total fights, 41 and 12 in old record. That's impressive. Okay, that's very impressive. And I would never want to disrespect the fighter who's a veteran like that. I've been fighting for a long time. Okay, but he's got a decision in his last six fights. Okay, what does that tell you? He doesn't have a lot of finishing ability. Okay, so the last six fights have all gone a decision. I feel like when you watch him on film, there's a lack of punching power. I mentioned this the other day. We broke down the Dana White Contender Series fight with... Um, Pedro um, um, Puerta, Puerta, the last guy who had the, the guy who had the last name Puerta, and man, the guy just does not have any punching power, right? And so, for me, that's a big issue here with Weichel. Um, I do believe over the course of his career, has he ever had a knockout? Um, he probably has. I mean, he's fought a lot of fights, but the bottom line is he's got a very low finish rate at this point in his career. Now, if I'm fighting a guy like that, isn't that sort of like a monkey off my back like i don't have to worry about getting knocked out the guy doesn't have any punching power so what does that do for me if i'm a fighter against him well i'm gonna be more confident getting in close on him i'll be more confident taking one of his punches i'm not worried about it and again he doesn't deal well with being crowded okay so that's a bad mix you know if i'm studying a fighter i'm fighting against i know he can't knock me out and he's gonna back up and and not do well with pressure what am i gonna do to him i'm gonna pressure him i'm gonna push the pace i'm gonna put him up against the cage i'm gonna make him ball up i'm gonna make him uncomfortable so if Pedro Cavallo is watching film and has an idea of what to do here, I would imagine the 26-year-old fighter should do that. He should push the pace, right? Now, look at the fight against Sanchez again. There's there's uh, there's film there. He slows down a lot in round two, okay? I want to talk about that too. So Daniel Weichel, a guy who's got a long history in MMA, obviously, 53 fights. Is it age? Is it training? I'm not sure if it's a combination. Is it that the, the tires are getting worn out on the, on the car here? Um, he slows down so much in round two with the fight against Sanchez. And Sanchez, who's a younger fighter, okay, is losing no steps. He's like moving, throwing more and more volume. And so the fight goes to decision, but it was never close. Like Daniel Weichel, he couldn't hurt Sanchez. He had a very low volume. He slowed down more and more and more. And honestly for Sanchez, I mean, he won the fight. He should have finished him. He should have been able to finish Weichel, but he couldn't do it. And for Weichel, hey, it shows this guy's no slouch. He's a veteran. Even at 36 years old, he's going to stay in there. He's going to take a beating if he has to. He's going to survive the fight. Okay. Let's talk, though, about Pedro Caballo. I wish I had more confidence in Caballo. He suffers from the same syndrome as Daniel Weichel, where if he faces a fighter who pushes the pace and backs him up, 
He's got no answers, man. He'll start balling up. He'll get beat up on the ground, on his feet. Um, not a great chin, okay? I do think weichel has got a better chin here than Carvalho. And Carvalho has shown in recent past where if you just chin check him once, he'll survive a little bit longer, but he's never he's never really recovered. He's not back. And so if he gets chin checked here by Weichel, which again is would be weird, a guy who's gone to six rate decisions, this could be the beginning of the end for the fight for Pedro Carvalho. Again, I don't know that that's going to happen, and I would imagine it's whoever here has the bigger balls, period. <laughs> Whoever's like, listen, I'm going to push the forward pace. I'm going forward. I'm not going to back up. And for me, that's the younger fighter. The younger fighter tends to have uh, no, no, not as many fears, right? He's not as worried about losing these fights. Now, with that said, Pedro just takes one shot. If he gets one shot, he, he starts to become a mess. He'll be on the floor. He can't recover. And Daniel Weichel can get his first finish here in seven fights, right? But I think that Pedro Carvalho, as a younger fighter, comes in here, okay, pushes the tempo, pushes pace, and let's say by round two, midway of round two, he has more energy. He's more active. So even if Daniel Weichel somehow wins round one, round two and three go towards a guy like Pedro Carvalho who's going to be a little more busy, throws some more punches. I do like his jab. I, I wish he would do more jabbing. He's four and two in the, in the Bellator um, promotion, Pedro Carvalho is, but at the same time, he's coming off of two straight losses, which you don't love. And on top of that, they're not just two straight losses. They're two straight losses where he gets knocked out by round one or round two in both fights. Now, J.J. Wilson, who he lost to in round two of their fight via ground and pound, you know, he was hurt, man. He was hurt. He didn't look good. Pedro was like on his hands and knees, getting punched, and on his back getting punched, not blocking anything, showing terrible survival skills. I'm going to acknowledge that. He does not have good survival skills. His prior fight, he lost against Patricio Pitbull two minutes into round one. And, you know, that fight could have gone longer, but it was just such an ugly knockout. It was a one-two punch, and, like, he almost injures his knee as he's falling down. He's, like, just folding like a suitcase. And so you see that, and, and of course, that's going to concern you. If you're looking to bet on Pedro Carvalho, you're like, oh, man, this guy, two losses in a row, hasn't won a fight since 2019. I mean, you start looking at his record here for Pedro Carvalho. He hasn't beaten anybody. Like, he's beaten some guys in Bellator, but not good guys. No one that's going to be super impressive or, you know, strike your fancy. All that said, when you compare them side by side, the experience advantage clearly goes to Daniel Weichel. More fights. The IQ advantage, I'm going to give it to Weichel. He's been in the ring more, a lot more ring time. Cardio-wise, slight advantage there for the younger fighter. you know. And if the fight goes longer, that advantage is going to be more and more and more. As for finishing advantage, I'm going to give it to Pedro. It's not that Pedro Carvalho is an amazing finisher, but before he lost the last two fights, he's got a neck crank. He's got a TKO, a guillotine choke. So his three prior fights against Luca Vitali, Derek Campos, and Sam Cecilia, all Bellator fights. He finished all three of his first Bellator fights. I'm sorry. His first four Bellator fights, he had one decision and three finishes. The point is he's got some finishing ability, whereas with Weichel, it's been six straight fights in a row where he has not, has not had a finish, all decisions, and actually the fight before that was a finish, and then back to decisions. So for him, he's never been a big finisher. I do believe age is a factor. I do believe hometown turf is a factor. Remember, Pedro Cavallo is from Portugal, but he's actually based out of Dublin, Ireland. If you bet more or less every Irish fighter on this card, okay, just bet him straight up. I don't care what the money line is. You're going to make out well because they're not going to go and have this damn event in Ireland, right? <laughs> and then shit all over the Irish fighters. It's not going to happen. So consider that in these close fights where you, you're not sure, and you got a guy who's 10 years older, that plus money at plus 190, it's for the taking. So I'm going the dog here. I like Pedro Carvalho, but I'm not going to put the mortgage on it because he can get chin-checked any moment, too. So there's our breakdown, guys. The co-main event for Bellator 270 features a bantamweight bout between the American Patchy Mix versus James Gallagher, the hometown boy from Ireland. Now, Patchy Mix, who goes by, quote, no love. That's a unique nickname for a fighter. Well, I guess it may make sense, right? No love. I got no love for you, right? 14-1 overall, 4-1 in his last five fights. Coming in right now is a minus 270 on the money line. He hails from Albuquerque, New Mexico, 28 years old, 5'11 in height with 71 and a half inch reach. And he's coming out of Jackson Wink MMA, so very good training. Um, and he's got a very good record of 14-1. And, and we'll talk about his lone loss here in a second. As for James Gallagher, who goes by the Strab Animal. I don't know what the hell that's supposed to mean, but his nickname is the Strab Animal. Must be some kind of an Irish uh, lingo there. He's 11 and 1 overall, so he's only got one loss. He's 4 and 1 in his last five fights, currently plus 220 ish on the money line you can get him at. 
25 years old, so a few years younger than Patchy Mix. He's five foot eight, so three inches shorter than Patchy Mix, and he's 67 inch reach, which is going to give him also a three to four inch disadvantage in the reach compared to Patchy Mix. And he's also coming out of SBG Ireland, which you're going to hear that again and again and again. Um, I say almost every single fighter on this card who's coming in from Ireland is also coming out of that gym, which is Conor McGregor's you know home club there. Now, as for the public vote here on Tapology, Mix is getting. 76% of the votes compared to Gallagher at 24%. I'm a little surprised, and I'm even a little surprised at the money line. When I've looked at the film of these guys, just my opinion here, I think they're like super close, you know, very even fighters. Like experience wise, 14 and 1, 11 and 1, right? Uh, IQ, they both tend to hold their own in there. They know how to grapple, they know how to wrestle. So even on the IQ, cardio wise, you know, I've seen both guys go long fights. I've seen both guys be able to sustain their momentum in two round two, three, four, five. So I like that as well. And for finishing ability, again, very similar. You know, it should be noted here, okay, in terms of their Bellator records, all right? For James Gallagher, he's eight and one in Bellator, right? And of those eight victories, six of them he has by submission. And it's a weird stat, but he's actually tied for the third most submissions ever in Bellator history. Now, Bellator history is a young history, and obviously fighters move around from different promotions, but... He's a submission monster, and with the short arms and the wrestling technique, that's where he wants to sort of, you know, take the fight. All right. Now, as for Patchy Mix, he's three and one in Bellator, and he has three submission finishes. So all three of his victories are by submission. Now, it, I want to note this because even though Patchy Mix has only a few more fights professionally on his record than James Gallagher, and Gallagher has more Bellator fights, Patchy Mix has a much more experienced uh, amateur record. So he fought a lot of amateur fights. Very good record there. So when you're talking about like overall experience. That's why I have them both at the same. One guy has more amateur fights. The other guy has more Bellator fights. Um, so pretty much at the same point. Now, James Gallagher is younger at 25 than 28-year-old Patchy Mix. I don't think age is a factor. I don't think gym's a factor. They both have very good gyms. But what I do like about James Gallagher is two things. One, he's fighting on home turf. I'm going to keep mentioning that throughout those breakdowns on, on, these, on this card. And secondly, he's, like, he's a grappler by nature, all right? So a guy who can grapple and wrestle... They have, a, they have a way to basically neutralize the opponent, right? So for Patchy Mix, he does do a good job grappling. He is a good wrestler. But his advantage for the length and arm length, right, his advantage to strike is going to be neutralized if the fight ends up being close. And now we're pretty much even, right? We're two wrestlers, guys who could both reverse position, guys who are both formidable on the ground, who could submit people. Again, six submissions out of eight fights in Bellator here for, for James Gallagher. So it's dangerous for both guys. But I imagine that's where Gallagher wants to fight. He wants to get the fight in close. He wants to bring the fight to the ground. And being that he's in front of the hometown, he's a plus 220 underdog, you could bet on Patchy Mix. And don't get me wrong, you could put $275 up to win 100 bucks. But the reality is this fight really is close. It's almost a pick em, in my opinion. And so since it's a pick em, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna fade Patchy Mix and go on the side of James Gallagher. I, uh, if, the, if the line was even, maybe you look at Patchy Mix, you take a double take, but what I like about Gallagher is the reality here. This guy is young. He's got the momentum. Um, and I want to talk about something personal here that I thought was really, to me, it kind of popped out. We think of Conor McGregor and you think of the Irish fighters. You, you, this, who's the other guy? Patty. The, 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 the recent guy, Patty, with the, the bowl cut. who looks like he's from uh, Quaker Town over here in Pennsylvania. <laughs> he looks like a damn Quaker. Anyway, this like brash, like peacock chest, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the shit walking around like Conor McGregor style. That's not James Gallagher. The dude has a tremendous level of charisma, respect um, for his opponents, for referees, for everyone around him. There's a few links here in the description. You can see his prior fights. Watch how he is. Watch his demeanor. He's extremely respectful of his opponent, respectful of the referees, other coaches. He's nothing like the loudmouth, cocky-ass European fighters that you may have seen from other promotions or may have seen from Connor. And I'm not saying that because I have anything against it. I'm just putting it out there that in terms of how he handles himself, he handles himself like a 35-year-old man, not a 25-year-old young up-and-coming fighter. A lot of respect, which also tells me he's mature. He's channeling his energy in the right direction. At 25 years old, in a co-main event here for Bellator, in his hometown of Ireland, the fire is under his ass, okay? He knows what's at stake. Now, could he still lose the fight? Is, pa is Patchy Mix uh, some kind of a can that he could roll over? No, 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 no. Patchy Mix is legit. And one of the things about Patchy Mix I like a lot, he's a, he's a strong first-round fighter. So he gets off to a good start. He presses the, presses the tempo. He wants to bring the fight to the ground. He's got energy. Problem is, if you look at his fight against Archuleta, he goes in and wins round one. Every single judge, I believe, had him winning that fight. 
maybe maybe it could be off on one judge. But I believe most judges on that on that fight against Archuleta had him winning round one, and I think two of the three judges had him winning round two. But then he loses round three, four, and five on almost every single judge's scorecard. Why? He fades. So at some point after round two, his energy level goes down a little bit. He's not able to keep that wrestling tempo. He's not able to keep putting the pressure on. And so for me, that's a little bit of a flag. It's not a big flag because I do think his cardio is actually okay. It's just that the reality is when he lost against Archuleta, he did win the first part of the fight. And Archuleta just took him to deeper waters and was more busy later on in the fight and actually gets the win. Now, one more fight for Patchy Mix that I want you to look at, and I have the link there in the description too, is the Morales fight. In 2021, which is just this year, he beats Morales. Now, Morales is 10, 8, and 1. He's basically a 500-level fighter, right? That fight goes all the way into, what, round three? And in round three, Patchy Mace gets an arm bar. Let's pretend it's a contender series match, right? Let's pretend Dana White's sitting there with his little notes and it's Dana White contender series. He doesn't give a contract for that because the reality is when you're going against a guy who's a 500-level fighter, and at that time, you're 13 and 1, and you're one of the highlights of the Bellator division, and you're a guy that's looking now in the co-main event, right? And you go to round three with a guy like that, Another red flag for me. It's like, wait a second. Is James Gallagher better than Morales? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. He's definitely better than Morales. So imagine if you start lining those comparisons up. Is James Gallagher give him more of a problem on the ground? Yeah. Can he submit James Gallagher? Can Patchy make a submit James Gallagher? Yes, he can. But we're talking about a guy who at 25 years old has the third most submissions ever in Bellator history. Six of his eight fights he's won by submission. Not going to be easy to submit that kind of guy. He's shorter, he's stockier, he wants to work in close. He's going to have the leverage advantage because he's shorter. So to me, this is a pick -em. I could see the fight going either way. But if you're going to wager on it, take that plus money at plus 220. I, I'm not going to be shocked if the week, if the, as the week goes on, we're going to have that line move a little closer to like minus 190-ish. I'm, I'm sorry, like, yeah, minus 190 for Patchy Mix, like plus 180-ish or so for, for James Gallagher. Because look, he's got the juice right now. And when I'm looking at a guy like Patchy Mix at 28 years old, I hate to say it, but I see him approaching his peak, whereas Gallagher is just scratching the surface. I got to say it one more time. Love the demeanor. His attitude, his maturity um, goes a long way, man. Guys get into that ring sometimes or that octagon. They lose their emotions. They lose their cool. Um, they can't keep it together. Again, a Conor, refer a Conor McGregor reference. Conor McGregor is a legend. So I'm not giving opinions on whether I like the guy or not. He's a legend. But all the talking that he's been doing before these fights – that has not helped him <laughs> at all, okay? Khabib literally almost suicide, ki almost killed everybody in his corner, okay? Almost killed everyone, like a mass murder. So the talking that Conor McGregor has been doing has not waged well for him in the ring. It's nice for promotions. It's kind of like this guy um, fighting this weekend, Colby Covington. The talking is great, like for WWE fans and the wrestlers who want to hear all that nonsense and promote the fight. It's great for that. But once you step in the octagon, that shit doesn't help you. It's going to be the calmer, cooler, collective fighter who's going to channel his energy into winning the fight that's going to help. And so not that Patchy Mix is a loud mouth who's going to waste his energy, but I believe James Gallagher right now at 25 years old, this guy has a chance to maybe carry the torch there from, from Conor McGregor. He has a chance to be one of the next Irish fighters that's really, really good and up and coming. He's obviously at a very good gym. So I like Patchy Mix to win the fight, and I'm going to keep probably favoring a lot of the Irish fighters. This fight is in Ireland for a reason. This guy is set up to, to, to do a good job here. As for Patchy Mix, I'm not surprised if he wins the fight. He's no slouch. He's coming in here knowing he's going to be off his U.S. turf. He's going to be in a foreign country. He's going to have people booing him. Um, he's black, so not for nothing. I'm going to just shoot you guys straight. Like, not a lot of black people in Ireland, okay? So I'm not going to get on to that. But the point is, he's going to hear the boos. They're going to want James Gallagher to win. And if it goes to decision, oh, I'm definitely on the side of James Gallagher. There's no question about it. Any kind of close fights that's going to happen there in Ireland, they're going to give it to the hometown boy. So there's our breakdown, guys. If you don't agree, let me know. And if you do agree, give me a shout. Let us know how you think about this fight. Let me know what you think. Am I missing something on here? Is Patchy Mix better than what I'm describing? Am I undercutting his ability? Am I selling him short? Um, how do you guys feel? Let me know. The main event for Bellator 270 features a much-anticipated rematch in the lightweight division between Peter Quilly from Ireland and Patricio Pitbull from Brazil. Now, these guys fought earlier this year 
It was uh, unfortunately a fight that ended a little bit quicker than people expected because of a cut to Pitbull. And we'll talk a little bit about that as we break down this fight. Let's go over the particulars here now. Peter Quilly is 13-5-1 overall, 3-1-1 one one in his last five fights. Currently a dog, so even though he won the initial fight here, he is an underdog at plus 160. He's from Dublin, Ireland, 32 years old in eight months, so he'll be 33 years old soon. He's 5 foot 10 in height with a 74.5 inch reach. He trains at SBG Ireland, which is pretty much the main gym there in Ireland. That's where Connor and a bunch of the Irish fighters fight out of. As for Patricio Pitbull, he's 23-10-0. He's 3-2 in his last five fights. He's currently a slight favorite at minus 150 to minus 190, depending upon what book you're looking at. He's 35 years old in nine months, so he'll be 36 years old soon. 5 foot 7 in height with a 71 inch reach, and he trains out of Pitbull Brothers, which is the gym, obviously, him and his brother run down there in Brazil. Now, according to Tapology, Pitbull and Quigley are pretty much even here. Quigley's getting 56 of the, 56% of the votes compared to 44% of the votes coming in for Pitbull. Now, the initial fight, okay, these guys fought back in May of this year. Now, in that fight, I believe Pitbull came in as a, as a pretty significant favorite. The fight starts off, and it's fairly even on the feet. Okay, at some point, okay, Peter Quigley cuts Pitbull. Now that's just from the jabs, so it's just a matter of repetitive jabs, nothing too violent. He just catches him the right way. He ends up cutting right above the eye of of of, of Patricio or P P P Patricky. I'm sorry, it's not a terrible cut. What ends up happening now? We go to round two, and now in round two, Patricio gets a takedown here on Peter Quigley, and as a takedown is happening, Peter Quigley is now landing hard elbows from the full guard position. And on his back, he's landing these hard elbows. He lands about two or three hard elbows to the top of the head, um, not the back of the head, though there was some speculation initially that it was back. It was not. It was top of the head and then right around that top corner of the head with a nice hard elbow. What ends up happening now is Pitbull is bleeding from all over the place. It's like a, a gunshot wound that you can't find the entry point where he's just bleeding everywhere. As round three is about to start, it's like there's blood coming from everywhere. The corner did not do a great job. Doctor comes in and just says, listen, we're waving this thing off here. He's bleeding all over the place. So from that standpoint, it wasn't like Pitbull got hurt. It wasn't like he gave up. It wasn't like he gassed out. None of those factors. But the reality is here, Peter Quigley did some significant damage in a very short period of time. This is the start of round three. So within the first two rounds, Peter Quigley was putting a bang up job on Pitbull. Cut him above his eye, coming to the side of his head. And so the damage is significant. Um, what I felt like the big advantage for Peter in that fight was that even when they were jabbing from a distance, the reach advantage was significant. Okay, It says he's 74 and a half inch reach compared to 71 for Peter for Patricio Pitbull. But when you watch them fight, Peter Quigley is just a much longer fighter. He's got a sort of a karate-esque type of style to what he's doing. Kicks a little bit, keeps good, at, you know, keeps good distance, good range. Whereas Patricio Pitbull is the kind of guy who's setting up that one shot, right? He wants the one shot. He wants to hurt you then follow up and sort of pound you out and finish the fight that way. And he's got a good ground game too, which is kind of ironic. He has a good ground game and he took down Peter Quigley in the first fight. Problem is when he took him down, he took a few hard elbows, which ends up finishing the fight for him because of the cuts. So I think Quigley at this point in his career um, is the better fighter. Patrick E. Pitbull, he gives me the impression, and this is, I could be completely wrong here. At his age, at 35, about to be 36, and having fought 33 fights in his career, he's slowing down. Now, that's an obvious point, right? 33 fights, 36 years old, almost. But there's a significant slowdown. I think you saw that in the initial fight. He's not as reactive. He's not as responsive. Um, he doesn't have the quickness that I believe he once had. And so for a guy like Queely, who's sticking and moving and, you know, the Muhammad Ali shuffle and he's circling and trying to get in and out, you know, jab, hit him, come out. It was like Pitbull was responding too late. It's like he's a half a second too late on everything. Now, I'm acknowledging the fact that Pitbull is the harder puncher. So if it comes down to like who hits harder and who has the better finishing ability, yes, I give the edge to Pitbull. Okay. When it comes to experience, I give the edge to Pitbull. The guys fought 33 fights compared to 19 fights for Queely, all right? So, but when it comes to fighter IQ and cardio, I give that edge to Queely. I noticed that Queely was fresher. Even, I know it was two rounds that fight, but he just appeared more more of a fresh fighter. He appeared like he just was, his cardio was more up to speed. And if that fight had gone to four or five rounds, and it was a five-round fight, but it ends after two rounds, I felt as if that would benefit Peter Quilly in the long run. He was more active, he was punching more, and he looked fresher. And in terms of IQ, man, I thought it was brilliant on his part that when he gets taken down, he goes ahead and hits Pitbull with three or four elbows in a row. Um, they were very well placed. He knew what he was doing. It was smart fighting. Um, a lot of guys get taken down on their back, and they're like, 
you know, they can't do much. They, they just hold on. They can't get up. Um, what does he do? He ends up ending the fight, in essence, while on his back, you know, not from a knockout or TKO, but because he's able to go ahead and create this massive additional cut after he already cut Pitbull on the feet. So this fight was in May, which is another thing that I want to mention here. If you're not familiar with, for example, scar tissue and how it heals, it does take time and it's different for every fighter. Now, this is plenty of time. We're talking about, you know, seven months or so removed. But, but, am I going to be shocked if Patricio gets cut? I mean, Patricio, I keep calling Patricio. If Patrick gets cut early and he's bleeding early on, am I going to be shocked? Well, I'll be shocked if by third round he's bleeding a lot again and that Quilly has found a way to get those sharp elbows back on his head again. No. And I've heard some people suggest that Pipple wins the fight because he's going to wrestle, take the fight to the ground. That would be the intelligent thing for Pipple to try to do. But he's tried that with this guy before and it ended the fight for him. And second of all, I don't think his takedown offense is going to be that effective per se in round four and five of this fight so could round one go to patricia patricky pitbull because he takes down quilly and he owns the position and he owns um you know position points and gets a few strikes on the ground yeah but look the the confidence advantage is definitely on the side of quilly and i heard one person say today that the fight goes a distance and they see pitbull winning by distance that to me is almost an impossible scenario for two reasons one his cardio is not as good as quilly and two this fight is where it's in Ireland. Okay. You got a bunch of Irish fighters in this card. Most likely, if a fight goes to decision and it's close, I'm going to favor the Irish fighter. You don't want to be holding a ticket from a Brazilian fighter, okay, in Ireland in a close fight. So, all arrows to me point towards Peter Quilly getting this fight and getting the rematch, winning it, and also taking the belt. And imagine this it's the main event. It's in Ireland. He won the prior fight, which brings me to the money line. I'm just I'm, I'm utterly shocked that he's a plus 160 underdog. Now, there was some rumors that when the books first opened up, he was actually a favorite. I think that the last name Pitbull, I think the family name, I think Patricky's past, those things are all lending towards the reason why he's a favorite. Let me poke some holes, though, in his game. In my opinion, in my opinion, when it comes to Patricky Pitbull, he beats a lot of average fighters, and he's definitely going to beat up a lot of cans. But whenever he takes a step up in competition... Like whenever he has to fight a better fighter like Michael Chandler, who he lost twice to, okay, or like Anderson, who he lost to, or the fact that he lost his last Ryzen fight, okay, these are the signals, these are the signs that, look, when a higher level competition comes in, he's got a problem, okay, now he's losing fights in Ryzen, you know, I'm, I'm just suggesting right now, I see a dip here for Pitbull, I see him kind of taking a slide down here, I think his best days are well behind him. I think for Peter Quilly, he's like right in the midst of his prime. The guy's only fought 19 total fights compared to 33 fights on his opponent. He just seems fresher. He, he did not get cut up in May like this other guy did. So, again, I think the, the cut's going to take a toll here. I think he's going to get cut up again. The elbows are going to play a factor again. And so long as Quilly can avoid the big shot, as long as he could use his head and avoid the big punch from Pitbull, he should be fine. Um, so with all that said, at plus 160, the main event for the Irish fighter, I think this is like a gimme. So I will bet this fight straight up in one unit. I'll put one unit here on Quilly to win the fight. I'm confident he wins the fight. I'm not confident how. is if, if it finishes again inside the distance because of some kind of a cut again or some kind of injury to, to Pitbull, I could see that. Um, but by decision, I could kind of see that even more, right? Now, one thing I want to know. In their initial fight, Patricky Pitbull does land a handful of lower leg kicks that Peter uh, was not happy with, okay? At some point, if you watch that film, and the link's in the description here, his leg is kind of beat up, okay? And again, it's only two rounds, okay? So if it had gone five rounds and Pitbull was not cut up and was still using the lower leg kicks, I can see that being a gigantic problem for Peter Quilly, which I'm sure his team's going to adjust to because he was taking some hard lower leg kicks, and you can see the bruising, the swelling was already there. He was already changing stances, so he was initially starting off in a traditional stance, and then eventually he moved to southpaw because he was having a hard time with his left leg, the lead leg, you know. So a lot to a lot to be analyzed here. I, I can see both fighters coming out, fighting a little different, making adjustments. And is there a world where, where, where Patricky Pipple comes in here and just decks him and wins the fight by a knockout and TKOs him? Yeah, but I'm 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 seeing, this is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a fighter who's declining. And then I'm seeing a fighter who's fighting in his hometown of Ireland. I believe that Peter Quilly wins this fight. He becomes the end new champion there for the vacant belt. 
And uh, he has a big party there in Ireland. So there's our breakdown, guys. If you don't agree with me, please comment. Give me your point of view. What do you think is going to happen in this fight? Are you a Pitbull fan? Are you a Brazilian jiu-jitsu fan? Do you think he's going to be able to bring the fight to the ground in his territory and wrestle him up? It's pretty personal, too. Consider the fact that Patricio Pitbull is usually in his corner. After they fought in May, Patricio Pitbull did have a verbal exchange with Quilly. It was not disrespectful, but it was along the lines of, like, let's do this again, and next time it's not going to work out that way. So... Revenge is a motherfucker, right? <laughs> so here we go. It's an opportunity right now. I think this door opens or closes for Pitbull. So if Pitbull wins the fight, he gets the belt. It's like, I'm back. I'm back. Brazil's here. If he loses this fight, this will be three fights in a row that he loses. And that's notable because he lost the fight, obviously, back in May to Peter Quilly. He lost the fight in 2019 against Tofik Musayev. Now, he's fought two times in the last three years or so. And both times he lost. I see an older fighter slowing down not as quick um too many hits to the head man these people brothers are tough guys and sometimes he just takes too many hits I, I don't love that fighting style it adds up over time and so now even though he's 35 turning 30, 36 he's more like a 40 year old fighter at this point there's a lot of wear and tear in those tires and not a lot of tread left so there's our breakdown again if you like people to win the fight let me know